Hi Joe. Oh, hey Mark, how are you doing? How are you doing? Not That's too fun. bad. Yeah. Well, um, what do you reckon uh, this new takeaway across the street? I mean, yeah, well to be honest with you, I'm actually just been standing outside it because I'm waiting for it to open. It hasn't been open for another six hours, but I've heard it's decent. Pete Sylvester has been eating there for the week for the last few weeks, so it must be good. It's a good uh, donut kebab over there. Oh, really? Um, but you know, did you, you know, we were talking about break even yesterday in the lesson. Um, I've been reading up on it. And did you do that graph that I asked you to complete oh, for homework? Right. I was up all night trying to devise this graph. Now, to be honest with you, I got it drawn, but a lot of the figures, a lot of the symbols don't make any sense to me, so I might need your help. So I that's, what, help that, that's what I came up with. So, yeah, how can we link this break even diagram to El Ranchito? Well, basically, you know, break even um, shows the revenue and cost of a business according to the output. And when the revenue um, meets the cost, basically, we're not making a profit, we're not making a loss. We're just, we're just covering our costs and we're breaking even. So we can see the break even point here. But if you were to choose a cheaper location like this one, basically the rent would be lower. So your fixed cost line would be much lower. So we put in this new fixed cost line here and we'll call it fixed cost one. So I can so see that this, this location, because I know it's like a mile outside of town, so you're thinking that the rent here is actually going to be less than maybe if they had a city centre location. I'm certain of it, Joe, because um, the, the rates in the town centre are a lot more and the, you know, the rent is a lot more. So basically you've lowered your fixed costs. And let's just go back to this diagram. What that's going to do is going to lower your total cost line um, here and then you'll get a new break-even point where the revenue meets the new total cost line. Call this TC1. Okay, but we can see that the break-even point is much lower. Okay, so, so there's a lower break-even point, but what does that mean relative to an actual takeaway? So what does break-even quantify as? Well, it's the number of units sold. So you know, with a typical takeaway, you're talking about the number of kebabs sold. It might be that this takeaway needs to sell about 400 kebabs a week to break even. Okay, now you've just I, I, I believe what you're saying, you're telling me that the break even has gone down, which is good for the business. So that means that it, they can start making profits sooner rather than later. But what I'm thinking though, will that always be the case for somewhere like this takeaway? It won't always be the case because you know business and uh, business is never, never certain. Um, the problem with locating outside of town is that your prices cannot be as high. You know, you get a town centre location, your prices are much higher. Um, so what might happen with a break-even chart is if you're charging lower prices basically your revenue line is going to be much flatter and you know not as steep so you might actually find that the break-even point increases you might even go up here so um, if, the, if the break-even goes up what impact will that have on, on say El Ranchito? well it might mean they, instead of selling 400 kebabs a week they might have to sell 500 kebabs a week you know and that's going to be more difficult for them to break even well, according to Pete Sylvester, he's got no complaints with them kebabs, so I reckon they'll have no problem breaking even in the future. I hope so, and you know, I, I think we should get a donor ourselves. Later Absolutely. On, ourselves. I think it opens in about four hours, so let's go back to reading our books and we can wait for it to open. Good stuff. See you later.